Hello again. You're watching Al Jazeera. Here's a reminder of our top stories this hour. British police have arrested a man for shooting dead a member of parliament. Joe Cox was killed on a street in the northern English town of Burstall. She was a member of the opposition Labour Party. The European Union's most senior official has warned that if Britain leaves the EU, it will open up a period of major global uncertainty. Jean-Claude Juncker urged voters in the UK not to take the risk when they take part in next week's referendum. And US President Barack Obama has travelled to Orlando along with Vice President Joe Biden as the city prepared to bury its first victims from the mass shooting. They met Four privately with survivors and victims' relatives as well as police officers who responded to the attack on Sunday. Well, the U.S. Senate is expected to vote on gun control measures on Monday. This comes after Democrats in the upper house held the floor for almost 15 hours through the night to demand action. The filibuster, as it's known, ended when they finally got agreement for a vote to ban people on the government's terrorist watch list from obtaining gun licenses and expanding background checks to gun shows and sales over the Internet. Joining us now from Philadelphia is John Lott. He's the author of the book More Guns, Less Crime, Understanding Crime and Gun Control Laws. He's also the president of the Crime Prevention Research Centre and is a pro-gun advocate. Good to have you with us. First of all, let's look at this uh, vote that's due in the Senate on Monday. Two Democrat measures, uh, first of all. I know there are also two Republican measures, but the two Democrat measures, do you think they'll pass? Well, I don't know. It may be close, but you know the problem is uh, the measures that are being proposed wouldn't have stopped the attack on Sunday. In fact, there's not one mass public shooting that you can point to that they would have had any impact on. I did. Uh, I did see that when you spoke to our interview producer before, and I had a, a quick look. I did see that perhaps the Virginia Tech shooter in 2007, he killed 32 people. He was deemed mentally ill by a judge, and he. Right perhaps would not have no, been allowed wasn't. to buy that gun. No, no. See, in order not to be able to buy a gun, you have to be, a psychiatrist has to say you're either a danger to yourself or others. The two psychiatrists that interviewed him did not believe he was a danger to himself or others, and he was not involuntarily committed. So, should so then, you know, he... Okay, so should there not be, then, better background checks, more universal, more comprehensive background checks, into the people who want to buy guns and who can do so incredibly easily. Well, I mean, I'm not sure what more you want. In that Virginia Tech case, the guy was interviewed by two psychiatrists who did not say he was a danger to himself or others. He passed a criminal background check that was there. But, you know, here's the problem, and that is, even though all these guys have been uh, able to go and buy guns, they could have obtained them illegally. I mean, drugs are not very hard to go and obtain in the United States, and the drug gangs are the same ones that sell both the drugs and the guns. What I, I'm really interested to know is, is how you argue that more guns mean less crime. Well, just as you can deter people with higher, criminals with higher arrest rates or higher conviction rates, the fact that would-be victims might be able to defend themselves can also deter them. You know, you look at these mass public shootings that we're talking about here, with three exceptions, since 1950, every single one of these mass public shootings has taken place where guns are banned, where civilians can't have guns. That was true on Sunday, too. Just a couple months ago, there was a case in Michigan where a father was concerned that his son was getting deeply involved with ISIS. He called the FBI. The FBI put a tap on his phone. And they have this chilling transcript where he describes why he had picked this large church that he was going to attack. And there's basically two reasons. One, it had a very large congregation. Two, it was the one church in the area that forbid its parishioners from having permanently concealed handguns mm. with them. This guy talked about how the police station was a ways away. The victims couldn't defend themselves. He would be able to go and kill people for a while before anybody would be there to stop him. And you see that time after time. The Charleston church shooting last year, uh, the Aurora Batman movie theater shooting. Uh, I could go on, but there's dozens of these cases, lots of these cases where these killers make explicit statements about why they picked the places that they did. And they do it because they want to kill a lot of people. 
and okay. they know the sooner that somebody can arrive there with the gun, they'll be stopped. Why are people allowed weapons that can kill many people? We're talking about assault weapons. Why do Americans need to be able to have access to those sorts of weapons? Well, I don't think most people know what we're talking about when they use the term assault weapons. There's three different types of guns. There's machine guns, one pull the trigger, lots of bullets come out. Semi-automatic, one pull the trigger, one bullet comes out, one pull the trigger, one bullet comes out. And then there's manually loaded guns where you have to physically yourself put a bullet in the chamber. None of these attacks involve machine guns. They involve semi-automatic guns. The vast majority of guns sold in the United States are semi-automatic guns. There's a benefit for civilians having semi-automatic guns. If you have two people break into your house, it, would you want a manually loaded gun where you have to fire once and then physically take time to put another bullet in the chamber? That doesn't sound very safe to me. Or if you miss your first shot, semi-automatic guns protect victims also. And, and the problem that you have <coughs> is that just because a gun looks like a military weapon, <coughs> Because, the, you know, they talk mm. about military-style assault weapons. All it is is it looks like a military weapon, but the inside guts is the same as any semi-automatic hunting rifle. Okay. So it makes no sense to ban a gun based on how it looks. They should do it based on how it operates. It is very interesting to get your views, because obviously many Americans do share uh, your ideas. But do you sense a change, a shift in momentum at the moment in America. I'm looking at a recent poll that I found on Reuters where now 71% of Americans favor at least moderate regulations and restrictions on guns. And that number is up from 60% in 2014. With this latest mass shooting in Orlando, is there a shift in the way people are approaching gun control? Well, <clears throat> first of all, I mean, there are polls all over the place on this. Sure. I'm not sure what it means by moderate regulations. I would argue we already have more than moderate regulations. We already have background checks on guns. We have lots of different types of regulations. You just can't, anybody just can't go in and buy a gun. Uh, if you're going to have concealed carry, uh, all the states have it, but you usually have to get a license, you have to get some training, you have to pay a fee. So I'm not sure when you say moderate okay, regulation. Okay, but are you sensing a shift means? in America that people generally want better, tighter gun controls? Look, I, I don't know about a poll that's done within a couple days after a big shooting. Usually these things will settle down after a week or two because there's a lot of misinformation, as we just talked about assault weapons, as we talked about whether or not the laws that are being proposed actually would do anything or not. If you look over the last... Uh, maybe 20 years or so, what you find is that support for gun control kind of peaked around okay. the late uh, 1990s. And it's been falling since then. In the last few years, there's actually been more opposition to more gun control than support for it. Okay. John Lott, I think we're going to have to leave it there, but it's been very interesting to talk to you and interesting indeed to see what will happen on Monday in the Senate. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, people. Israel's national water company has denied cutting water supplies to large parts of the occupied West Bank during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. They say the water shortage is due to a combination of poor infrastructure and a damaged water pump that Palestinians say water.